So welcome to the 128th meeting of the Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. The magic in new beginnings is truly the most powerful of them all. So there are certain missions in our club. The missions are the, to provide a supportive and positive learning experience in which members are empowered to develop communication and leadership skills, resulting in greater self-confidence and personal growth. The, there are certain guidelines which we have to follow in Toastmasters. First is ensure that you are logged in with your correct name. It will help us you to identify you easily. All speakers and role takers are requested to add the name of their role next to their name. All guests are requested to prefix guest before their name. It can be done by clicking the participants tab to rename yourself. Know when your camera is on and avoid doing any activity that may distract the speaker. Please mute your microphone when other speakers are speaking to avoid background noises from interrupting the meeting. Please unmute your microphone and start your video when the Toastmasters of the day or Table Topic Master asks you to do so. Please raise your hand to volunteer during the Table Topic session to speak. Let the host and co-host handle all the controls. Avoid interjecting the speaker when he or she is delivering the speech. Refrain from speaking about religion, sex and politics in a derog derogatory manner. Avoid conversations in chat publicly when someone is speaking as it may distract the speaker. Look out for green, yellow and red colored cards on the screen. They will be displayed by the timer at appropriate times. At the end of every, every segment, please cast your ballot when the host displays the polls on the screen. Now I would like you to call the presiding officer for today's meeting. So she is uh, the Toastmaster, Toastmaster Archana. Uh, Toastmaster Archana, uh, over to you. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Devika. And a very good evening to all of you here. And a happy Sankranti, happy Kongal, happy Lori, happy Uttrayan, and happy Bihu to all of you. So today is an auspicious day to begin our new journey with a new fresh team here. And we all, we all have gathered here to see and witness that start, that beginning. So thank you so much everyone here for coming here and uh, participating here and making us um, so delighted to have you all here. So let me... Uh, ask and uh, speak to few guests here. Uh, I can see a few names like Rishita. Uh, can you come off camera and talk to us and to tell us about yourself? We would be very glad to know about you. Rishita, are you there? We have uh, Toastmaster Noshin also. Uh, can you come off camera and tell us about yourself? Toastmaster Noshin. Uh, sure. Uh, hi, Toastmaster Archana. Hi. Am I visible? Yeah. Visible. Uh, and hi, hi. Hi, I am Noshin and I'm uh, currently the VP Education of the Lucknow Toastmasters Club. So I have joined this meeting today as a prepared speaker. I am currently pursuing my PGDM from Jaipuria. Apart from that, I am pleased with Parnorika as a trainee as well. Talking about my hobbies, they are sketching, baking. And it was a pleasure coming to the meeting of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. And I had asked Toastmaster Anushka to get me to one of the meetings because I wanted to really. So looking forward to a great meeting with all of you. Definitely. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster Noshin. And indeed, it's our pleasure to have you here as a speaker as well as our guest. So we would like to um, know more about you and also would like to see you more in our meetings, in the next meetings also. Definitely. Hope you have a good time with us. 
and uh, we have Toastmaster Shankhi also after a long time here. So, would you like to come up, Toastmaster Shankhi? Uh, of course, Toast. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Arjuna, for everyone for the benefit of the guests. I am a Toastmaster visiting Toastmasters Club of Lucknow after quite some time. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin, uh, the incoming pr president and the outgoing presiding of the outgoing president uh, who is who is delivering her last presiding officer address. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Arjuna, and I, great to see you taking up uh, the helm of the club for the past six months and looking forward to this meeting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Asanke. And it's always a pleasure to have you here with us. And it, you are the guiding light for all of us. And we have been following you uh, since the very beginning the club has been made. So it's indeed a pleasure. Thank you so much, Toastmaster. Now we have Toastmaster Bala also. Uh, would you like to come up? Am I audible, Toastmaster Achana? Yeah, of course. Thank you. I think this is the first time I'm joining this club's meeting, but uh, really excited and looking forward to join this meeting and hope I will have a good learning experience from all you great Toastmasters. Thank um, you. I know thank you. from which club you are joining. Okay. I'm from the Technopark Trivandrum Toastmasters Club. This is a club in Trivandrum in Kerala. This is part of District 121. Okay. Great. Great. I think it's an offline club. It is not exactly an offline club. It we meet two the uh, two weeks we meet offline Hybrid or in club. person, yeah, and then two weeks or two days in a month we meet online. So it's both. Okay, so we can uh, meet uh, very often in our club also with you. So hope you have a great great time with us. And moving on uh, to Rishita, thank you so much, Toastmaster. Rishita, are you coming up? So maybe uh, she is not in the mood uh, right now. We can uh, talk to her later on as well. So let's begin with what we have come here. In every ending, there is a new beginning. It's a proverb. And it conveys the idea that even when something comes to an end, it often paves the way for another opportunity. It often paves the way for a new chapter in life. Just imagine a caterpillar's life journey. It begins with an egg. It becomes and transforms into a caterpillar. And then it eventually wraps itself into a cocoon. A cocoon that seems like something has come to an end. But inside it, there's a huge metamorphosis that goes on. There's a profound changes that it goes on and emerges into a beautiful butterfly, a butterfly, a symbol of new life, a symbol of new beginning. Similarly, in Toastmasters, every six months, there's a huge metamorphosis that goes on. And, one end, and when one chapter goes, ends, there's a new chapter that begins with a new team, a new EC team. And for that, today, on this auspicious day of Makar Sankranti, we are going to begin that new journey with us. And to take that new journey, we have our Toastmaster of the day and our installation officer who is going to join towards the end, those, uh, the distinguished Toastmaster Gayatri Deshwar. So let me welcome our Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Smita over here. She is an educator, an EI intelligence, emotional intelligence trainer, competitor, an anchor, a storyteller, a mom of um, two breaths, and an arduous learner. She is a toast. She became a Toastmaster in 2021 and won several accolades and contests. She has been the past president, the VP Education, and now serving as the treasurer of the. Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. So let us welcome Toastmaster Smita Kotkar, an eminent, elegant, and an elite Toastmaster over here with a huge round of applause. Over to you, Toastmaster Smita. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Achana, for this warm, lovely, gorgeous introduction. 
which is totally akin to the personality that you hold, every single bit of it. So thank you so much for this. Good evening, my dear friends. As Toastmaster Archana has already spoken to you about new beginnings, I would like to tell you that today our theme also is in line with that. There is this, these words of Maya Angelou that I so adore. She said, each new hour holds new chances for new beginnings. The horizon leans forward, offering you space to place new steps to, of change. And here today, we have new people stepping up and take up new responsibilities. We also have the immediate past role takers, our EC officers, our executive committee officers, who will hold the light for them till the time they are comfortable in shining themselves. So before I tell you about every single person who is here and the kind of work that the new executive committee or the executive committee of a Toastmasters club does, I would like to welcome our associate club growth director here. Our associate club growth director here today is taking on a very, very huge responsibility. And it is so beautiful because he's one of the founder members of the club. And today he is at the position where he's acting as a guiding light to all the people present in the club. This role as the guiding light is known as the general evaluator. So please help me welcome Toastmaster Asankhya as a general evaluator who will come forth, speak about his roles and also introduce his tag team. Toastmaster Asankhya. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster of the day, uh, Toastmaster Smita Kodkar, fellow Toastmasters dear guests. Uh, it's great to take up the role of general evaluator. As the name suggests, I'll be evaluating the meeting in its entirety. And you can consider the role of a general evaluator as someone who is a head chef who will be cooking the dinner spread for you today. Uh, maybe not the dinner, but maybe the evening snacks for you today. And since it's a mammoth task for someone to do it individually, uh, I have a tag team or a sous chef, a team of sous Just a second. Yeah. So I have a tag team that will be assisting me, a team of uh, sous chefs, I would say, who would be there to assist me. To start with, I have uh, the grammarian or the word master who will who has taken up uh, this role, who is not none other than Tobes Master Abhinav, who will be helping us with how he will be evaluating on the grammar front. So he is the incoming VP education of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. Over to you, Toastmaster Abhina, to help us with your role. Good evening, everyone. As a grammarian, I will be looking after the good uses or bad uses of the grammar uh, in the speeches of the speakers and as well the speeches of the event, uh, other role players. So can I have a screen sharing rights? You have them. So, today word of the day is endeavor. The pronunciation is endeavor. To strive to achieve or reach. Or to attempt something such as fulfillment of an obligation by the exertion of effort. The uses is she will be endeavor to achieve her goals. Satyanath Bose is a known for his endeavors in quantum mechanics. And the phrase of the day, as high as a kite, to feel very happy and excited. I am as high as a kite about the upcoming meeting. I was as as a kite when India won the Cricket World Cup in the 2011. I will present my report at the end of the meeting, when called upon, upon by General Evaluator. Over to General Evaluator, sir. 
Thank you so much, Toastmaster Abhinav, for uh, helping us with the word and phrase of the day and sharing your responsibility. Next up, I would like to invite the our counter for the meeting today. Uh, that is being played by none other than Toastmaster Archita, who again is the, I believe, the incoming VP membership and the outgoing secretary of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. Over to you, Toastmaster Archita, to help us with your role as the accountant today. Thank you, General Evaluator, for the introduction. Uh, my role as our counter is to count the number of hours and filler words, like so, and uh, other filler phrases like, you know, I think so, and filler sounds like hours and arms. And I also suggest you to avoid body gestures like rubbing your nose and looking in different direction while the speaker is speaking. And if you'll do so, and if you will do so, I'm here to catch it. I will show my report at the end of the meeting when called upon by the general evaluator. Till then, back to general evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Rajita. Last but not the least, uh, we have the timer for the meeting today that is being played by none other than, none other than Toastmaster Bala, who we just heard in the introduction introductory session today. Over to you, Toastmaster Bala, to help us with your role as a timer. Thank you, general evaluator. Today, I'll be the timer. And for prepared speeches, you will have five to seven minutes. For table topics, two to three minutes. And I will be showing the red card, yellow card, and back the uh, yellow card and the red card in my background. For so for prepared speeches, still five minutes, you will see no background or this normal background. And when it comes to five minutes, you will see this. Six minutes, you will see this, and seven minutes, you will see this. Same for table topics in. One minute, you will see green. One minute, 30 seconds, you'll see red, yellow. And in two minutes, you'll see the red card. You will have grace period of 30 seconds. But after the red card, I will not show any indications. It's up to you to conclude and stop. There will be no indication given by me. If you cross that 30 seconds, even if it's 31 seconds, you're disqualified. So please keep a note of that. Thank you. And back to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bala, for helping us with your role. So combined, we'll be back together uh, to present our report in the final session of the session, uh, the evaluation segment, sharing some insights as to how the meeting went and how people can improve on their respective roles or their respective speeches today. Uh, that's all from my end. And uh, we, uh, our endeavor would be to do justice to our respective roles. Over to you, Toastmaster Jatin. Uh, sorry, Toastmaster Smita. Thank you, General Evaluator, Sir Toastmaster, thank you. They say no man is an island. And how true is that? Look around you and everywhere and anywhere, you will always find people working together. And when they work together, yes, the outcome is always different and successful. In a Toastmasters club, few members take up the responsibilities to be leaders for that term. This new people, this committee, that they form is called the executive committee. It's also chaired by not only the president, but at the helm of the affairs is also the immediate past president. In this term, the immediate past president is whom you had heard earlier, the very shiny, very gorgeous, and at the same time, a lady who wears many hats. She is an anesthesiologist whom you had heard earlier as the president. She is now the immediate past president, Toastmaster Archana. The immediate past president's role is to give guidance and she serves as a resource to the president and the other club members. She also chairs the nominating committee. She assists in the preparation of the club success plan. She promotes the club's efforts to become the distinguished club. So though she is no longer the president, her duties have not finished. Isn't that wonderful? The next comes the Sergeant at Arms. The Sergeant at Arms is somebody whom you heard at the beginning, Toastmaster Devika. She was the one who started the meeting. And she's also responsible for many other things. For instance, like maintaining or keeping track of the club's physical properties. Here, we do not have so many club physical properties because here it's an online setup. But she ensures that Everybody is warmly and comfortably present there in the meeting. At the same time, she also chairs the social and the reception committee and attends and participates all 
in all executive committee meetings. She's the one who's also seen preparing the certificates, doing a lot of back-end work. And we are very thankful to our immediate past president, Toastmaster Achana, and our Sergeant at Arms, Toastmaster Devika, for doing such a wonderful and a cool job. The next in line in this uh, EC committee is the secretary. My dear friends, a little about each role is what today I will be telling you before I tell you how we actually function in a Toastmaster suite. So bear with me a little. The next role is that of the secretary. The secretary is responsible for all the club records. Oh, I was actually, I was supposed to speak about the treasurer, but I've already started the secretary, no wonder. So let's begin and let's complete the role of the secretary is responsible for not only the club records, the correspondence, taking down the minutes of the meeting, but she also updates and distributes the club roster of paid members and keeps it current in with the world headquarters files. The secretary keeps a copy of the club constitution and the standard bylaws for the clubs on file. The secretary maintains all the club files and all the documents of all the EC meetings too. Wow, isn't that wonderful? So, so much goes on behind the scenes. And now, let me also tell you that a Toastmasters meet is all about a lot of things that you will see here in the front end. And a Toastmasters meet is divided into three sections. The first one is a prepared speeches section. Here, our ardent Toastmasters work a lot preparing speeches, practicing how to speak, bettering their vocal variety and present lovely topics and themes to you. Then comes another section called the table topic section, which is open to every single person present in a Toastmasters meet, whether they are members of this club, any other club, or even attending this meet as guests. The third section is called the evaluation section, which is headed by the general evaluator. You've already heard the general evaluator tell you and introduce the tag team and that they'll be coming in later with their report. So without further ado, let us now jump in to the first section, which is called the prepared speeches section. Before I invite the speakers, I will be calling the evaluators to take center stage and they in turn will be calling their um, speakers and also they'll be in introducing the speakers and also inviting them to uh, say their speeches. The first evaluator whom I would like to call on stage is who loves to be called the friendly neighborhood Toastmaster. is none other than Toastmaster Jatin who's our new president and um, when I have to speak about being lovable or being loved, he has a big question mark and he's both. So let me uh, welcome Toastmaster Jatin as evaluator one. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction as well. If without further ado, I would like to move on to our first speaker of the day. Our first speaker of the day is Toastmaster Noshin Fatima, and she is from the, our sister or parent, either of them, a Lucknow Toastmasters Club. She already mentioned that she's uh, the Vice President Education of that club, and today she's uh, she's joined here to give the attempt the first project of third level of her dynamic leadership pathway, which is all about negotiating the best outcome. As part of this project, her purpose was to learn about different types of negotiation and the strategies that can be used while negotiating. Through the speech today, she is going to share some aspect of past or future negotiation in her life. Uh, the speech can be in any style, either humorous, informational, or anything that she chooses, but it has to be well organized and doesn't need to be a report on the project itself. <clears throat> while the speech, uh, well, as, as you mentioned, she, she's all, I think she mentioned that she's also a student at the Jaipuri Institute of Management, but she has already negotiated a job for her uh, through while, uh, while studying. So let's see whether that is going to be a part of her speech. Over to you, Toastmaster Noshin. Um, a mental parole, a mental parole 
Toastmaster Noshi. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin. Indeed, now since you have mentioned about uh, my negotiation for getting a good job, I would just like to start my speech by telling about one of the incidents that had an impact on my life in such a way, which led to a whole of transformation of Nashi. So to start with a quote, I would like to begin. If you want to take something for yourself and if you want to own it, take ownership of yourself first. So a very good, uh, good evening to all of you and greetings to all the distinguished Toastmasters and guests. To start with what is actually negotiation all about? As I mentioned, I'm currently pursuing MBA and to tell about negotiation, there comes a matrix. That matrix is not actually about the style, but about the winning or losing situation. To talk about the two, uh, the two axes for this matrix, they are either losing, winning or losing or winning. And then comes the four styles, including uh, wherein a person has to make a compromise or he or she either avoids the situation. The next one is being collaborative. And the last one, and my type, is that of a competitive one. I will tell you about an incident that actually shaved my life. And that incident was took place with me long back in 2020. In the month of July, I was preparing for the ultimate preparation for stressful condition, that is the UPSC at that time. And all of a sudden, I found that my interest in preparation was somewhere or the other getting lost or faded away. At that particular time, I was confused. What was I going to do next? My family, they always kept on uh, telling me that this is something that you were just thinking. It is in your mind and nothing is special there. Later on, I went to one of the doctors without telling it to anyone. At that moment when I met the doctor, the doctor told me to go for certain sessions and usually we call in medical terms cognitive behavioral therapy sessions. I undertook four sessions or five sessions post which I recognized that in every session I, I was just uh, told by my psycho clinist that there is always a speed breaker in our life and we need to cross that speed breaker. Okay, that's fine. And then my psychiatrist, based on every session report, used to prescribe some medicines for me. Up till that time, the negotiation part was inactive, totally inactive. Later on, sometime later, I went to one of my doctors and he was not actually the main character of the story, but a neurologist. Because the medicines those were prescribed and the the narcotic drugs as a part of the cell course, they had somewhere or the other caused numbness in my lower part of the body. I found that numbness was not because of any neuro issue. It was something else. And now enters the main character of my story who taught me how to negotiate for the best outcome. I entered the cabin, knock, knock. Dr. Aditya, he said, get in Noshi. I was there. And I quietly asked the doctor, doctor, I think I'm not able to adapt to these medicines. And I have a question to you. Do you really think these work? And Dr. Aditya, he very calmly said, Nasheen, honestly, having it at your age is not at all useful. So if you want, you can stop it. But don't tell doctor, uh, the other doctor who was actually a psychiatrist. Otherwise, he would think that my colleague is doing uh, is of uh, getting a halt at my occupation. After that, I decided, and I even asked my doctor, doctor, what would be the best alternative? And he said, Nasheen, go for a rigorous exercise. I decided to stop those medications and I began with one of the process, which was the best negotiation that I did with myself. A competition not to beat any other physical entity, but a competition to get out of the sphere wherein I was enclosed. At that particular time, I entered into a gym wherein I found a person who was my coach. I started negotiating, negotiating with a person who was mentally weak at that time, but still the strength in her physical being was at its peak. That competition with myself 
turned me into a power lifter after some time. Now, since you mentioned about getting a job and negotiating for it, on that particular day, I would like to tell about a phase before I could be given the final result of my job. I again had to negotiate with myself, not because I was selected, but because I was unofficially rejected. As I heard the news of rejection, I was again numb. I was not ready maybe to accept the situation, but the negotiation preached by that person at somewhere or the other brought me into the shoes to negotiate for the best outcome. That is acceptance in my case. I accepted the rejection this time with simply saying, okay, for the grammarian, it's, that's fine for me. That was the time I negotiated and probably that competitive nature in me, somewhere or the other, led to acceptance, which was the most important at that point of time in my life. Moving on to the next part. That are compromising, collaborative, avoiding, and competitive. A person who has an avoiding style for negotiation always leaves a loose loose situation for both the parties. Talking about a collaborative person, it is always a win-win situation for both. But you always don't need to be win-win. There always doesn't need to be a situation like that. Moving on to the third category, that is the competitive, wherein a person wins and the other person loses. And the last one is compromising, wherein you have to give up what you want to the other person who actually wins. To talk about the best time, all of them are somewhere or the other best, reaching out the best possible takeaways to everyone. But in my case, this competitive style, not only somewhere or the other brought uh, winning moments to me, but also losing moments, which taught me to embrace those imperfections in our life, thereby taking away the beauty of life. So that's all who I am. I negotiate for the best outcome being a competitive leader. Thank you. Over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Noshi, for this beautiful speech. Now I would like to invite our second evaluator. Our second evaluator is doing her master's in VLSI. She calls herself a not so social person and loves to spend time with herself, with her family, listening to music or trying out new recipes or even talking to her friends. Please help me welcome our second evaluator for the day, Toastmaster Devika. Toastmaster Devika, the stage is yours. So the uh, second uh, speaker for today's meeting is Toastmaster Suraj. Toastmaster Suraj belongs to Vaishali, Bihar. And he, uh, she, he has done his graduation. He likes reading books, listening to audio books, and playing guitar. His, uh, his, he is doing the first level, Project 4, and the pathway is Dynamic Leadership. The title of the speech is A Childhood So Precious. Toastmaster Suraj, A Childhood So Precious, A Childhood So Precious, Toastmaster Suraj. Over to you. What is childhood means to you? Anyone here? For me, childhood means simplicity. Try to look at the world through an eye of child. Everything will look like beautiful things. Very good evening all dear Toastmasters and guests. Whenever I sit and I try to remind or try to recall my childhood incidents, suddenly I start having lots of reminiscent smile on my face. And I feel like, wow, what were those days? And uh, there were some things where now I think that I have 
get matured enough to react, to respond to certain kind of things. Whenever now I go my home, I really feel very good and I miss one character of my life. One person with whom I always, you, you, I have always been so comfortable sharing each and every things, all the secrets. I used to love talking to her. I used to be around her. I used to get inspired by her serene and so peaceful thoughts. And the way she has been doing very, you know, altruistic work for the world. Yes, friends, I'm going to talk about Gangaji. You know, whenever I go my home, I try my best to reach up to her as soon as possible. Because that's the only place, I mean, she is the only one with whom I sit together and start recalling and start conversing all my childhood's activities, all my memory. And she used to tell me that, Suras, now you have so grown up and now you rarely come to see me. So how is your days and what are you doing? And do you remember how in your childhood you were so naughty and you were not listening to everyone? I have remember that in the in your child childhood you used to go to garden and used to spend the entire day, especially in holiday, summer vacation. And I have also remember that you used to miss your breakfast, your lunch, and you used to engrossed in playing with your near and dear and your friends. She also told me that during that time, you used to mount any, tre uh, any trees, like especially the mango trees, guava trees. And whenever anyone used to request you to come down, you immediately used to put some kind of condition. And I have also remember that you used to take a book so that you can show your parents that yes, I'm studying. And you used to mount on the trees and just like a cow's potato. And there were some branches you, and even I have seen you that you used to tie yourself with some kind of rope so that you can make a better balance. Then I also told her that there were also some days when I took very big risks. There was an occasion when my father and I were enjoying a bath and suddenly there was a tumultuous flow of water which threw both of us in a very great depth. And uh, obviously I was a child and I was not aware what was happening but my father was a very good swimmer i know he was swimming but somewhere i felt that someone is helping both of us to get to a shore and we were at the shore and then we both bow to the gangaji i have remember that whenever I used to pass by her, there was not a single day when I would have tried to put some sacred water on my face, which used to make me feel refreshed and reinvigorated. You know, whenever I do that, I feel like Yes, I'm as high as a kite. I never, I never forgot to 
burn a lamp on Diwali for her. I never did any activities which would have tried to pollute her. You know, recently I visited her and nowadays I th it seems that she is quite feeling bad. She told me that Suraj, you know, nowadays there are a very, very rare person who is really taking care of me. You know, I am covering a very long journey of 2525 kilometer and now I feel that throughout the journey that I am exhausted and it can be seen ladies and gentlemen because sometimes she goes far away from me from a show and sometimes she showed her anger flowing above the green line which can be easily seen so dear toastmasters can't it happen that before we expect someone else to take action for the betterment of the environment around us can't we run a, an individual campaign in our respective lives individually which will ensure the well-being of not only our lives, but also our future generation. Because this is something which we can save and we can maintain a great life. Here, life stands for lifestyle for environment. Thank you so much. Now over to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Suraj, for this beautiful speech. Let me take you off spotlight now. Thank you, timer. Okay. Yeah, I'm here. Dear friends, we've heard some wonderful, we heard two beautiful speeches. And now it's time for me to tell you a little more about what the executive committee here does. Remember, we've spoken about the IPP, the Sergeant at Arms and the Secretary. They say, um, actually it's Maya Angela only who she says, that stepping onto a brand new path is difficult, but not more difficult than remaining in a situation which is not nurturing. So here as our Toastmasters, they step onto newer paths, taking on newer responsibilities. I present to you, Two more EC roles. The other one that I would like to speak about now is that of a treasurer, who's the club chief accountant, managing bank accounts, writing checks as approved by the EC, of course, and depositing dues, payment, and other revenues. The richest person in a Toastmasters club. I would like to thank distinguished Toastmaster Aziz Ahmed for being the treasurer and helping him was our division director, Toastmaster Shobit. The accurate and timely performance of the treasurer duties has a profound effect on the health of the club. Well, you know, there are no tax documents right now, but we notify members of the due cycles and submit all the dues to the world headquarters, working with the club leadership. That is what the, the treasurer does. In this term, it is me who's going to be the new treasurer, a lady with lots of money. You know, that is what I'm going to be doing this time. The next role that I would like to tell you about is that of a VPPR, PR standing for public relations, who is the club's link to the outside world, notifying the public that we exist. The Toastmasters Club of Lucknow is here and it's waiting and raring to go and we want you to come and attend our meetings. He oversees the websites, the social medias, the brand management for the club and Whenever the club does anything newsworthy, he's the one who is telling the world about it. We loved having Toastmaster Shubham as our VPPR and we told him, we can't do without you. So Toastmaster Shubham is also the VPPR for the next term. Now, before I tell you about the diff more roles, about the other roles, it's time for everyone to get 
um, get what? Get jogging, get running, get into the shoes where they are going to be speaking a lot. Yes, it is time for the table topic section. The table topic section is going to be done by a wonderful, energetic lady who happens to be the immediate past president of Lucknow Toastmasters Club. She's working at GMI Pune and she loves to watch anime. Please put your hands together and help me welcome the table topic master for the day, Toastmaster Anushka Pandey. Toastmaster Anushka, the stage is all yours. Thank you, Toastmaster Smita. Good evening, everyone. Uh, it's, first of all, it's good to see familiar faces again here. Now, uh, to explain about the table topics segment, table topics features are like mini speeches with an opening, a body, and a conclusion. The guests and members both can participate in this segment. You will be provided with the time, uh, you'll be provided with a topic right here on the stage. And then you'll have to speak for a maximum of 2.5 minutes. Just to remind everyone, the timing for each speech would be one to two minutes. You'll uh, you'll get 30 seconds buffer time to wind up your speeches, and you'll get 30 seconds before before starting your speech to think and structureize your speeches. I would encourage everyone to use word and phrase of the day in your speeches. So let's start. Who will be the first one? I would encourage the guest. Okay, then I'll pick. Cool. Uh, starting with, let's start with Toastmaster Suraj. You're free right now. Okay. Shall we? Yes, you. Okay. So the topic for you would be <clears throat> What is the most thrilling adventure you have ever experienced? What is the most thrilling adventure you have ever experienced? Toastmaster Tubers, what is the most thrilling adventure you have experienced? What is the most thrilling adventure you have ever experienced? Toastmaster Tubers. Only constant is change. And... Uh... I wanted to bring a change in myself by learning a swimming. And uh, for me, swimming is one of the best exercise and adventurous activity also. And since my village is situated on the bank of Ganga River, so every day in my childhood, I have spent like an adventure, adventurous day. So, it was my habit that I used to call my friends and some seniors also that, yes, this is the time and we are going to enjoy bathing. And you people may amaze to know that I used to go and I used to challenge myself daily. Like uh, whenever I used to jump, in the water, especially from the height, then I used to go so in depth and from there, at least I had a breathing stamina that I can be underwater at least for 55 seconds to sometimes one minute. And during that duration, I used to cover easily 40 to 50 meter distance in water and that was a kind of adventurous activity for me i would also include that there have been some situation when i have tried my best to rescue a child and i was that very happy when there was just a kid and he was just trying to just take himself out of the water but uh, when you go in the water, you know, it's quite difficult for yourself to control yourself because you want to get out of that water, but especially you are going down. 
and uh, I realized that and uh, I immediately jumped towards her and uh, I somehow evacuated and that day I had a feeling of that yes I have learned it I have developed uh, activities which is in itself an adventure so that's all from myself thank you so much Thank you, Toastmaster Suraj. When I chose this topic, I thought your story would go like about a trip or something, but yours was kind of a superhero one. So kudos on that. Uh, now, for the next topic, who would like to come? I'm giving you a choice for five seconds. You can raise your hand or I'll pick. No one? Okay. Then let's go with Toastmaster Manvi, can you hear me? Sure, can you hear me? Yep, you're audible perfectly. Coming on camera would be difficult, will it be fine? Yeah, sure. It should Thank be you. fine. Okay, your topic would be if you could have any animal as a companion, which one would you choose and why? Toastmaster Manvi, if you could have any animal as a companion, which one would you choose and why? If you could have any animal as a companion, which one would you choose and why? Those must demand you. How many of you are animal lovers? Please give a raise of hand. Many, right? And I am totally opposite of you. I am someone who is scared of animals. I am someone who don't like animals. And I am someone who used to not like those people who keep their animals in their rooms. Because what I believed as a science student was animals have a lot of bacteria and all these things that can make a human fall sick. Until and unless there was a situation where one of my friends who had three dogs in her house went for a trip. And the reason I am telling this is those three dogs in the meantime, we're at my place. Just imagine a girl who neither want to touch dogs, who don't like animals, have free pet animals and have to take care of those. That was the situation. I felt a little, little difficult in first few days. But then what I realized was I was never a pet hater. The love inside me for specific individual, for the people who, for not exactly for the people, but for the animals who cannot say what they feel, who cannot express what they are going through. I do have that. And that was the point when I realized if animals cannot, I saw many humans even cannot express their things that they have. We do say animals are our best companion. They can hear what we don't say. But why cannot we say to the people who are around us? The question that gave me a realization that if animals cannot, humans can even not. So if I do, though I'll never do this, but if I have to keep a pet at, as my companion, I'll keep dogs because they changed my life. What is that specific animal to Smash Anushka that you would love to keep? Over to you. Okay, Smash Mani, first of all, thank you. And uh, just like you, my favorite company would also also be a dog. I have one, like, uh, there's a street dog near my house, and he's practically a pet of my house because my parents feed him all the time, more than us, even sometimes. So. Yeah, that would my and my parents' companion both. Now, for the next, uh, I would like to invite Toastmaster Abhina. Please turn your camera on and get on the stage. Thank you, Toastmaster Abhina. Okay, so your topic would be what is your favorite form of creative? Uh, creative expression like writing, painting, dancing, any of these, and why? Toastmaster Abhinav, 
what is your favorite form of creative expression favorite form of creative expression and why those must have any there are many uh, type of creative expression are uh, there means maybe dancing drawing or maybe anything you want means you want to do but of mine i think creative expression if i want to say something in a way that i want to say but it can be conveyed to the person but it should be should be in the coded words so maybe in a line of some of poem or something in in the type in the type of that that the person get Uh, get the sense of it what i am trying to say but it is not exactly that uh no uh, when i try to means convey uh sometimes it conveyed or sometimes it not conveyed i am talking about that my uh, lovely wife uh, prachi that i sometimes uh, uh, took a one two line of poem to him to her to, to her that about something but sometimes it she understands sometimes she uh, does not understand it doesn't matter but i am trying to my say my something that that it it could be convey in a manner that that other person understand so from my childhood i try to do that and uh, whenever i try to write something uh, for uh, the lines or something uh, for myself or for anyone i feel that that it the thing is quite unique or it it has a importance in my life so for that yeah i convert in a writing or in a poem one two three lines not more it people get bored <laughs> so for, so here uh, i conclude myself over to you toastmaster oh uh, t uh, timo uh, thank you thank you toastmaster vino and close to yours uh poem mine fa- uh, my favorite creative expression is music like it feels really comfortable to uh, you know like know that there is someone else who is going through same things and having the same like uh, what do you say emotions and uh, yeah like that so moving on to the next one can we have dr dilip can we have you on the stage yeah good evening hi good evening yeah uh okay so the topic for you would be if you could have any mentor living or dead who would you choose and why dr dilip if you would la- if you could have any mentor living or dead who would you choose and why a living mentor living or dead who would you choose and why dr dilip yeah uh for mentoring i want not a single mentor because i want a mentor from all side in all field and according to me the best mentor is nature everywhere every time you can learn from the nature like the from rising sun or from the stars from the moons from the rivers so for me not a person be a mentor for me most probably i like nature to be my mentor that's all from me. please go on you still have time yeah yeah but see there light slight disturbance around me <laughs> that's why <laughs> i stop yeah okay no yeah. worries thank you dr dilip and you had quite a different take on the topic i would say because when i uh, generally when people say living or dead they usually go for people only but yeah yours was definitely a different and a nice take on the topic mine would be surely gandhi ji because i got anger issues quite serious when i can learn a thing or two from him okay so moving on to the next topic can we have those master jatin
Are you available? Sure. Okay. <laughs> so your topic would be if you could witness any historical event, which one would you choose and why? Those master Jatin, any historical event, which one would you choose and why? Any historical event, which one would you choose and why? Those master Jatin. If I could witness a historical event, well, there are multiple multiple events I would like to witness. Um, the first thought that came to my mind was, I would like to know what was the what was the world like when I was born. Was it was it as chaotic or as inconvenient as it is now, or was it more was were there more simpler times? It's not been many years. I wouldn't say I would. Uh, I, I wouldn't like to say that I'm very old. In, in order to say that it has been a lot of time, but certainly the things that have uh, the world has become so dynamic and it's so much has changed over the past few years that it become it. It's really difficult to understand or gra take grasp of things as we do live our day to day life. Right from right from those simpler times when, as a kid. Used to you, you could have fun out in the in the sun and rain. Doesn't matter what the weather is. Go out, uh, enjoy with other kids, have fun, uh, play, learn, fight as well. Get some scratches, get some bruises, and then come back and uh, learn from. Uh, sit in your home and then enjoy the the warmth of your home itself. But then, why wouldn't I choose a very important, uh, very important event like the independence when uh, Jawaharlal Nehru? Uh, our first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru gave the speech at the midnight of uh, the midnight, whatever that title was, I forgot, sorry. Or when we had this, uh, the breakthrough, the first Pokhran uh, atom, atomic bomb uh, test in 1974, because all those are already available to us in one medium or another. And then why would I want to go back in time and waste my that sing, superpower to learn something that I can already do what others have recorded? So for me, it would be something that nobody else has seen, that nobody else has thought of seeing, and then learn from it, just like uh, Dilip Ji mentioned, is learn from nature. Same way, I'd like to learn from those times, from those simpler times as to why, why have we gone wrong, where have we gone wrong, and what would it take to go back to our roots that will really take our path forward in a much easier and efficient way. Over to you, Table Topics Master. Thank you, Toastmaster Jatin. Yours was quite a logical take on the topic. That was really nice to hear. Thank you, Dr. Zatan. And coming to the next topic, uh, who would like to go? Toastmaster Ajita? Okay, yeah, sure. So the topic for you is what is your favorite way to practice self care uh, and nurture your well being? What is your favorite way to practice your self care and enjoy your wealth? Okay. So, Master Alchita, favorite way to practice self care and nurture your well being. Favorite way to practice self care and nurture your well being. So, Master Alchita. Okay. So, uh, there are multiple ways of practicing self care and nurture well being, but I don't do so on a daily basis. But generally, when I do, then I go for something like doing exercise in the morning. But then I get get tired, and then I go for uh, skincare. But that also I don't do very well. Then I try to make something like I do. I make things like handcrafted DIY things, and uh, I when I make something by by myself, I feel so good at that time. Even after doing exercise, I don't feel. Uh, generally, people say that if you do exercise, you will feel feel good. But when I do, I feel tired, and I. I don't feel good, and uh, and I also make journals. I write at night, sometimes in the evening, and uh, and yeah, I also love to listen music, which do this sometimes when I feel very. There are lots of thoughts when they are going inside my mind, and there is a cluster. I just listen to music, and I that that's where I feel that yeah i healed and something happened to me after listening to songs yeah that's all the things like i i told you not just one i just told you everything i do whole time when i don't feel good 
for my self care okay so thank you thank you to master arshita you practically told us that you get tired very easily okay the so the last table topic for today uh, so who would like to go to master devika or to master smita so anyone can volunteer i can volunteer if someone can volunteer for timing okay to master santhi will take care of the timing for you to master wala okay so the topic for you is what is your favorite way to relax and unwind to master wala what is your favorite way to relax and unwind what is your favorite way to relax and unwind to master wala you are simply an idiot i got to hear this from my wife when i was just lying down i on my recliner and watching a movie and she said on a sunday afternoon you are just lying down i said i'm just relaxing i just want to unwind it's not my endeavor to become some kind of sharukh khan but i just want to watch his latest movie that's what i'm trying to do and she said there are so many things to be done there are so many things to be bought you have to go to the grocery shop you have to do this you have to do that and the list was not ending suddenly i realized the best way to relax is just to listen to your better half do what she wants at home she is the boss what is the problem in just accepting it that's the best way i relax i just listen to her when i listen to her that is the best relaxation i have and what's the best way i want to unwind definitely if the boss of the house allows on a weekend hang out with friends have a cup of coffee and chit chat with them that really is unwinding for me one part is take care of the family that is important even though i may have said it in a jovial way it is important that we take care of our family first people can say that it's like you have to do this thing you have to do that thing everything but like they say in the aeroplane first put on your oxygen mask that is important because unless you take care of your family you will not be able to take care of others for me relaxation is taking care of my family and definitely to hang out with friends and have that cup of coffee thank you and madam back to you madam table topics master thank you to master wala uh, your take on the topic was really nice i can't relate i can't say i can relate to your topic but as a woman i definitely felt really good listening to you what was my timing uh, madam total timing Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Sure. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And there is one last topic still there. I have, but only if you volunteer yourself. So, do we have any volunteers? Oh, we can. Okay, <laughs> Doctor Dilip, you want to go again? Can we do that? Are yes. we allowed? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah ma'am. Second time table topic. Ah, uh, let's do it. He was uh, since he's I can see he's in the hospital. It seems and there were people who were near him, so we yes, can. Yes, ma'am. Uh, well, let's cut the other um, attempt of his dose master Jatin and take this. Okay, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, Doctor Dilip, your topic would be. We can go right. Yeah, ma'am. Yeah, okay. What is your favorite way to spend a weekend, and why, Doctor Dilip? What is your favorite way to spend a weekend, and why? What is your favorite way to spend a weekend, and why, to uh, Doctor Dilip? Hello. Yeah, I'm Advil, ma'am. Ah, uh, yeah. yes, you're Hello. Yeah. 
so actually being a doctor uh, my week is very weak there is no any weekend uh, daily is a weekend and daily is the week start so actually i take a small rest a leisure time every day from my whole day so there is no concept of weekday weekend but from last fever i have started taking the rest in the sunday then when i started taking rest on the sunday then sunday became angry with me why you choosing to me not monday not tuesday not thursday i tell because you are the sunday and sun is the master of the whole solar system i have given this day as offering to you to be relaxed then he said that i am the master of the whole solar system so you have to work more on the sunday and there the sunday become more busy step for me then i start taking rest on saturday i think he will not say to me anything and he will be happy taking rest on the saturday and then he again told according to hindu mythology i am the son of the sun and sun is the princess and he is the more powerful in the family to give the order so you have to work more on the saturday not on the sunday so i think that saturday also gone from the week weekend so i have take to another day then i start from the monday and then tuesday then monday said i am the starting of the day according to the gregorian system so you have to good start on the first day of the week and you have to work more on the first day monday then i think okay everything on i should go on the mid of the week so i search the mid of the and then i found this thursday will be better to take the rest so i start taking on the rest on thursday then again i got in trouble and i got in indian mythology he is the guru of the all all the deities and devtas so again he inscribed me and give me the order because i am the guru of the all the deities and all the planet so you have to work more on the thursday so that's way there is no weekend philosophy in my <laughs> life and that's i abandoned this philosophy of the taking rest on the weekend and every day is a weekend for me and every day is the week start of the my day that's all from my side thank you that was really a wonderful take but your take was more like what is the saddest way to spend your weekend rather than what is the best way okay uh, i That's... i am still i am still uh, in taking time to search how i spend my weekend and not to find that why okay. i david from the topic hope you soon find a way to spend your weekend in a better way So that was all from my side for the table topic segment, and I would like to hand the stage back over to Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Smita. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Anushka, my dear Toastmasters. Can we have a warm round of applause for our table topic master? Thank you. Before we move on further, you know what I'm here for today, right? i'm here to tell you a lot about what the executive committee does but before i do you all heard some wonderful speakers who spoke who tried to speak in those 2 minutes and tell you a story uh i'll request to master jatin to put in a poll for the best table topic speaker as well as the prepared speakers whom you had heard before in the chat box i'll give you 30 seconds to fill something pending just master jatin i just wanted to confirm that um, all the prepared speakers yeah. and the table topic speakers have qualified for voting uh timer to confirm please are all the speakers the table topic speakers prepared speakers qualified for voting both the prepared speakers are qualified Toastmaster Nashin took seven minutes twelve seconds, and Toastmaster Suresh took seven minutes twenty seconds seconds. They both are qualified. 
in table topics except for toastmaster dilip others are qualified and both are actually in the first attempt toastmaster dilip was under 1 minute and in the second attempt he took like 2 minutes and 59 seconds so only toastmaster dilip is not qualified other table topics speakers are qualified for voting thank you so thank much toastmaster bala we will be putting out polls in the meeting chat and we'll request you to fill in those google forms mark the speakers whom you loved hearing the most so that we can then uh, give a certificate of appreciation to the speakers whom you voted for toastmaster jatin does this form have both no it's for best prepared speaker okay i request everyone to please vote for your best prepared speaker i'll give you some time to do that and also for the best table topic speaker please i'm sure you would be done by now so now let's move on to the next two roles in the executive committee the executive committee has people who are working around the club and they are the ones who are taking the club forward the next two roles whom i would like to speak to you about are two very very important roles the first one is that of the vice president membership because of whom basically we are here because he or she is responsible for recruiting and managing all the processes of bringing in guests and transforming them into members by initiating a welcome to the guests providing information they need to join maintaining a constant influx of new people into the club the vp membership manages the paperwork related to processing the applications he has of course the executive team to work with him but he is the one who is responsible for monitoring the membership levels and overcomes membership challenges when they occur we've had our new vice president membership who is here and also an outgoing are both the uh, outgoing and the incoming members here in the group we i would like to acknowledge them uh, so sorry i'm just trying to see if both of them are here if i'm able to locate them the incoming the incoming vp membership now is toastmaster archita and the outgoing vp membership is toastmaster abhinav i would like to thank toastmaster abhinav no who's the outgoing who's the incoming did i mix it up no right the right i did or i did not i did no ma'am no ma'am you you are not <laughs> so i would like to thank the outgoing vp membership toastmaster abhinav for a fabulous job that he did and of course um uh, to the incoming membership the incoming vice president membership toastmaster achita uh, wishing her the best to fulfill her duties of the new role the next club officer is the vice president education who is the club's chief scheduler and the primary expert on education awards speech contests and the mentor program the vp members the vp ed uh, fondly called orients new members to the club appoints the mentor assignments uh, make sure all the members understand the importance of excellent evaluations and the toastmasters education program the vp ed it also encourages members to participate in other toastmasters activities and program administer speech contests participate in ec meetings of course and is the one who presides over the meeting in case the president is unable to make it for any reason i would like to congratulate and welcome the new vp education toastmaster abhinav for taking on this role from me as the outgoing vp education so all the best to master abhinav 
uh, for a wonderful time here. It's a great role and I'm sure you will be fulfilling it to the best of your abilities. So we have now seen six roles. There is still one more role left, which is at the helm of the Toastmasters Club. But before we tell you about that, let me now call the general evaluator to take over the evaluation section. Toastmaster Asankhya, uh, should we do the evaluation section now? Yes. Yes. Wonderful. So over to you, general evaluator, to take on the evaluation section. Thank you so much, uh, Toastmaster of the Day, Toastmaster Smitha, uh, for a wonderful Toastmaster of the Day, helping us with insights as to how the incoming ex and the outgoing executive committee are transitioning uh, with respect to the leadership of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. And again, I am back as a general evaluator uh, to conclude the meeting. And before I do that, I have a set of tag team players and a set of evaluators who will be uh, sharing their insights about how we did uh, how we can improve on our respective speeches. For To start with, I would like to invite uh, the evaluator for speaker, Toastmaster Noshin, uh, that is Toastmaster Jatin. Over to you, Toastmaster Jatin. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator. Well, good evening, once again, one and all, and to Toastmaster Noshin in particular. Can I see her? Share on okay, yeah, yeah, there it is. All right, so uh, Toastmaster Noshin has given us a wonderful example of the most difficult type of negotiation of negotiating through the shackles of one's own mind and thoughts that cause the most suffering. And kudos to her on that. The way that her speech started by acknowledging evaluator that's my comments, which sort of address part of a negotiation, showed her comfort on stage on this virtual dais and the presence of mind that she demonstrates. I would like to add up here that it would have been, though it's not really required to do that, and also it sort of at times may weaken your opening with that you would have planned for your speech. So you have to be careful about when on when do you want, uh, when do you want not, not want to start utilize this strategy. Because I uh, would be acknowledging evaluators' comments is definitely got me engaged. Definitely told me that Toastmaster Noshin is was listening to what I was saying. But your job as a speaker is also to engage the audience, bring into what to uh, so that they are more uh, att paying attention to what you're going to speak about. That speech then moved on to telling us what your what the different types of negotiating styles were, which is a really good strategy is to tell the audience what you're going to uh, talk about before you actually tell them what you what you want to tell and what uh, wonderfully done the all the four part negotiation styles that you pre presented you also explain them what i felt is you left the collaborative part towards the end and you said okay and there is collaborative part would have been good that if you could have given equal weightage to each of the four part if you're explaining what those styles are and then keep it succinct because I understand that you do not want to move on to the actual uh, part that you are related to. But then comes your crux of the meat of the uh, speech, which is your powerful stories, the stories of your uh, negotiation of not being a negotiator, then negotiating with the doctor, accepting rejection through um, because of your job, even if, though it was unofficially. So that showcased the credibility in that you have really learned and adapted those understood those negotiation styles and have I understood what your style within that that is. So, thank you for uh, in, enlightening us and informing informing us of those uh, those characteristics. Which comes to me uh, to the last point of uh, my suggestions is towards the end in the conclusion you mentioned that you are competitive. You follow the competitive style, but it seemed to me that it came out as an afterthought. It really uh, I was sort of struggling to connect it through all the three uh, stories that you mentioned as to how did that competitive nature come out? And how it would have been good if you could have sort of given in a proper uh, pauses between those stories. So for us to let us grasp those stories and then understand how do they connect to your negotiation style, which is a competitive one. In summary, I really liked your comfort on stage, which and your information style of telling us about all these negotiation styles. You had really good content. If you could just work on 
slight your pauses and let the audience grasp the content that you're trying to absorb, uh, let them absorb, your speech could be a really inspiring one. Thank you. Over to you, General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin, for that wonderful evaluation. That was really insightful, to say the least. Moving forward, I would like to invite uh, the evaluator for speaker number two, Toastmaster Suraj, that is Toastmaster uh, Devika. Over to you, Toastmaster Devika. Uh, thank you, Toastmaster Asan. Uh, good evening to one and all once again. So, Toastmaster Suraj, your speech was exceptionally well and well structured. It had a clear beginning, it had a middle and an end. And your speech was structured effectively. And the, the message you, which you wanted to give through your speech was very impactful. Your speech ended with a very great message and it had, uh, had an impact on the audience. So some recommendations which, would, uh, which I would like to give it to you uh, is that while your speech had a great content, your uh, stage usage was limited and it, it, it felt like uh, it made it less engaging with the audience. And uh, second is you had a great content and but your eye contact was somewhere missing. It made you uh, it made us feel uh, that you were disconnected from the audience. And uh, uh, there were uh, some you have to work on your grammar uh, and pronunciation because uh, somewhere you are using a great um, great words great phrases but uh, you were pummeling so we were not able to hear it properly and at the last in the conclusion i would like to uh, i would like to say that you had a great uh, a great uh, speech with a great uh, content but if you incorporate some of the recommend recommendations which i have given it earlier then it would be more impactful and uh, more engaging Thank you, and over to you, General Valentine. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Devika, for your evaluation. I would urge uh, the Tech Master to share the polls for the uh, best evaluator. Uh, if Toastmaster Jitin, if you can share the poll, yeah. Can the timer confirm? So just uh, yeah, just before yeah, that, uh, uh, General Valentine, sir, the, if the Evaluator has not taken two minutes. Uh, is he or she qualified? Uh, no, in that case, minimum two minutes is no, no, 130, no, no. right? 30, 30 seconds, seconds. 30 Okay, 30 seconds, seconds at, at the lower end as well. So if the participant is between one minute and one and a half to three and a half, he or she is good to go. Okay, then both are good to go. Uh, Toastmaster Jitin, if you can share the Google form, and I would urge all the members in the audience to vote for the better evaluator today and the polls for which will be shared just in a moment by Toastmaster Jitin on the chat box itself. To start with, before I proceed with the tag team evaluation, I'll just share my insights about the speakers and the evaluators. Toastmaster Noshin is the first speaker and again, his her evaluation, her speech was particularly on the styles of negotiation, her strategies with respect to those styles and how she zeroed in on one particular uh, style of negotiation as such. Uh, Toastmaster Noshi started with uh, her anecdote, uh, her basically negotiation with her doctor, sessions with him, sessions moving forward to her placement season, how she negotiated, at first she accepted uh, the, uh, the basically the rejection and then how she got that job. Again, I would agree with the evaluator Toastmaster Jitin, wherein he mentioned that you could have given equal weightage to the other aspects, other strategies, like collaborative, competitive, as what I felt, you just mentioned about the collaborative style at, as it is a win-win situation or a competitive style, wherein it was a, just a generic anecdote. Uh, if you compare this with the other com the other style of the strategies that you shared earlier, right, you did basically delve deeper a lot more into the other styles. And we would love to know as to how that particular style is your primary style. Just allow me a second. Uh, 
Uh, yes, uh, moving forward, Toastmaster Jitin, a very well done evaluation. No specific feedback for you. Again, you started with uh, the again a proper uh, approach wherein I felt you had those pointers that were actionable for Toastmaster Noshin to incorporate in her further speeches. Moving forward, Toastmaster Suraj, you again, Toastmaster Suraj, a well done speech uh, filled with a lot of uh, good phrases, words, something that we all can uh, take care of. A lot of things for Grammarian, I feel, uh, that you give as pointers, as words that she could, he could make a note of. And just one feedback specifically to the entire speech. The underlying message of your speech came a little towards the end when almost the red card was up. So the crux, we you how you related your entire uh, basically drawn a parallel to the river Ganga and how you draw a moral out of it. The underlying message could be a little earlier because I felt it was almost towards the end of when the red card was shown. So if you could have maybe taken the 30 seconds or a little more, that could just help you reinforce on those uh, aspects as such and give certain more points pointers as to how you are coming to that inference. Again, one other feedback would be the positioning of the camera can be at a parallel height to your shoulders as such. That is one thing that you can make a note of. You shouldn't be looking down, but rather it should be at a parallel height. You can just mount the camera a little upper. That that would help a lot. That would help you make a better connect with the audience as such. Uh, that's all from my end. And I hope we are done with the polling for the best evaluator in the meanwhile. I would like to invite my tag team, starting with the timer, Toastmaster Bala. Over to you, Toastmaster Bala. Thank you, General Evaluator, sir. I'd just like to share my screen. That report. Uh, host, can I request you to give me the sharing rights, please? They have been provided now. No, I don't. I cannot share still. OK, anyway, in the interest of time, let me just read out so that it's easier. Please try again. <coughs> been provided to you. You are one of the cohorts. Now I get it. Is it visible to everyone? Yes, it is. OK, so like I mentioned, both the speakers were qualified. The uh, Toastmaster Noshin took 7 minutes, 12 seconds within that 7 minutes, 30 seconds time. TM Suraj also 7 minutes, 29 seconds. Evaluator TM Jatin took 3 minutes 29 seconds. Evaluator TM Devika took 1 minute 36 seconds. And I'm still counting on your time, uh, Toastmaster Asankia. But in table topics, like I mentioned, all are qualified except for Toastmaster Dilip in his first attempt, which we all agreed that it will not be counted. But still, he was less than one minute. And in the second attempt, he went over 2 minutes 30 seconds and c concluded at two minutes, 59 seconds. So the, my only request to Toastmaster Dilip would be when he sees the red card, just try to conclude within the 10 to 15 seconds time, because your second speech was really engaging, but it's unfortunate that you are not qualified. Thank you. That's my report. And back to you, General Evaluator of the day. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Bala, for helping us with the time, how we did on the timing front. Moving forward, I would like to invite uh, the R counter for the meeting today that is being played by Toastmaster Archita. Over to you, Toastmaster. Good evening, everyone, again. So before uh, showing the report, first of all, I want to congratulate a few Toastmasters for uh, because they endeavored the art of uh, not using filler phrases and words in their speeches. Further, I would like to share my screen. So uh, let's start with Toastmaster Jatin, our speech evaluator and table topic speaker. He used the word uh, two, two times and some repetitive words like and so. Toastmaster Noshin, she used uh, a few times, three times only. Next, Toastmaster Devika, she used uh, more than five times and repetitive words, so, but, and many times. Next, Toastmaster Suraj used uh, the word uh, two times. And he used filler words and phrases, you know, I mean, multiple times and the repetitive words, so and like. Toastmaster Anushka 
our table topic master she used filler words like a uh, you know so but a, a few times uh, then toastmaster archana our presiding officer she used a uh, three times and repetitive word was here then our table talk speaker toastmaster manvi she used a uh, two times only then toastmaster abhinav used um and as uh, multiple times more than five times and repetitive word but toastmaster vilip used a uh, two times and the repetitive word is so and actually i was also the table top speaker but was not able to count my filler words and and uh, then lastly toastmaster sankhya our general evaluator used our four times till now and that's all my report back to general evaluator thank you thank you so much toastmaster archita for being uh, crisp and succinct with your report moving forward uh, i would like to invite a grammarian toastmaster abhinav over to you toastmaster abhinav uh can i share my screen you have the rights toastmaster abhinav okay. okay so the word of the day day endeavor used by uh, three times by tm asank tm bala and tm archita kudos to them and uh, the uh, praise of the day as a as high as a kite uh, used by nun uh, so try to uh, inculcate these things so that challenge a little bit challenge to your mind when you are speak when you are speaking so maybe to give some challenge to your mind it is good for you to use word of the day and phrase of the day the good uses are the metaphorses the word used by is its meaning our transport our transformation as magic or a sorcery a symbol of light a symbol of beginning a species of vision of makar sankranti there is a breakthrough you are guiding light very shiny and very gorgeous if you want to take ownership of anything take ownership of yourself first in every ending there is a new beginning the bad uses are that that they was kept take, telling they were kept telling it is difficult for yourself to control yourself the correct use is, is it is difficult for you to control yourself to start a uh, uh, to start a sentence i do not want to any mentor for mentoring for mentoring i do not want any mentor it's just not uh, make uh, it's make sense but it is not uh, look good and uh, instead of using used to you can use word accustomed to attuned to so that uh, it will uh, be better for you to use this word so that you can give a, give a more impact in your speech over to you general evaluator sir thank you thank you so much toastmaster abhinav for sharing that report and if i can ask if you did make a note of how many times the word of the day and the phrase of the day uh, was used uh, word of the day used three times okay and by can you name those people who used it if <laughs> did make a yeah. note yeah t uh, tm asankhya tm bala and tm archita all right thank you so much thank to sir abhinav uh, for sharing your grammarian report uh, moving forward uh, i before i uh, start with my evaluation report i would just urge the uh, tech master to launch the polls for the best tag team player amongst the three uh, that we have today timer account grammarian i would now like to start my evaluation with respect to the entire meeting uh, but before i i believe toastmaster the sankhya's um screen has frozen he'll be joining us soon again i think
but we also have many other people who have joined in. I think Toastmaster Asankhya is back with us. Yes, Toastmaster Asankhya. Uh, yes, I am back. Apologies for it. I was facing some network issues. To start with, again, with my evaluation, with respect to the table topics, we had a wonderful table topics evaluations today, starting with Toastmaster Anushka, the way you conducted it, it was something humorous. It was the best part about uh, what I liked about your table topic session today was the way you were sharing your insights about those topics and how you could have dealt with those topics. And it was something light. It was something humorous. And that made the atmosphere a lot, lot more open and comfortable for people to take up a topic and come upon the stage. So kudos to you on that. And thank you, Mick, for taking up this particular role as such. The first speaker, Toastmaster Suraj. The topic for you, Toastmaster Suraj, was what is the most thrilling adventure you have ever experienced? So again, just like Toastmaster Anushka mentioned, this could have been something, a superhero. Uh, this We wouldn't have expected that super, superhero moment coming from you. So great job, first of all, for saving that child, having that sort of a proficiency in swimming and holding your breath for 55 seconds takes a lot of, uh, like, takes a lot of strength for someone to do that. And kudos to you on how you shared your entire journey with regards to that experience that you zeroed in later on, starting with about your swimming journey, then moving forward to that anecdote of yours. Uh, it would have been great if you can maybe, since I believe you had some time, if you could have shared uh, about your, how you felt after that uh, basically experience as such, that would go a long way in making that sort of a moment relatable with the audience as well. Second, the second speaker being Toastmaster Manvi, uh, Toastmaster Manmi, the topic for you was if you could have any animal as a companion, which one would you choose and why? A great way to start Toastmaster Manvi asking a question, engaging the audience right from the get-go. But a contrarian or an antithetical view that you took up against the popular opinion, like you do like starting with something like you do not like animals or you wouldn't like preferring prefer keeping an animal as such. So that again is something to hook an audience, goes a long way in hook making sure that you have the attention of the audience as such. Then making it a little relatable as to how you uh, had two puppies or two dogs to take care of and how that basically motivated you to have dogs. If you had an opportunity, you will have dogs as your uh, a pet or something uh, if you had that opportunity as such. And a way, great way to end your speech and a great segue from taking up this topic to relating it how if dogs are have not having a basically an opportunity to speak or convey what they're feeling. It's equally something that you witness in humans as well. We are not all at the same level to share what is going on with ourselves, with the with our close ones, with our friends, with our family. So a great way to end and make it a lot more relatable with the audience as such. So kudos to you on that. Third speaker being Toastmaster Abhinav, what is your favorite form of creative expression? So Toastmaster Abhinav started uh, with sharing few poems that he she, he used to do with his wife and then moving on to she, coming on to that conclusion that writing is, is that favorite form of expression be it in poems be it in uh, any other form as such but it would be writing Toastmaster Amirav since you had some time left with you I would urge you if you could have shared certain other aspects like writing at uh, at a childhood writing at a teenage years writing at an adulthood years as such and sharing who would be the target audience at, at what point as such. So this would again give it a lot, you have a lot more content to talk about, plus giving you giving us insights about you, about your overall journey right from your uh, infant days up till uh, your adulthood as such. So that is something you could have incorporated in your speech, given that you had some time in your hand as such. Toastmaster Dilip, you had a dual opportunity. If the first topic for you being, if you could have any mentor, who would you choose and why? And again, he, you again took up a contrarian opinion. You won't have a mentor, but it's a nature, it's the surrounding that you would prefer to have as a uh, as a mentor as such. But I felt again, you, you could have talked a little about something, uh, other aspects as well. I felt you were in a situation at, as wherein you were not comfortable talking. So great job on taking up another topic and having that sort of a humorous take on the topic that was favorite way to spend your weekend. So the conclusion here was Toastmaster Dilip does not have a weekend as such. So a great way to coming to that conclusion. But again, as the timer mentioned, you could have lessened on the uh, like the entire speech with respect to the timing front uh, since it went a little overboard with regards to the 
two and a half minutes time threshold that we have for a table topics as speech. Uh, but overall, a great take and how you made it all. Basically, you cracked us all. The entire the audience was entirely hooked to your speech and was basically all ears with regards to how it's neither a Sunday or a Monday or a, even none other day as such that would help you gain that sort of a, a way to just spend your weekend because you have none. Moving forward, Toastmaster Jatin, if you could witness any historical event, which one would it be? Which one would you choose and why? So Toastmaster Jatin, again, what uh, a great insightful start when you mentioned you would like to go to a place when you were born. Just see how things were at that point of time. Be it chaotic, be it dynamic, be it anything else as such. But a, a thought-provoking start to the entire topic. Moving forward to sharing some historic events, be it Pukhran. Why wouldn't you go to that specific event? Because that is readily available information for that. And why you would prefer going to some place wherein something that no one else has seen or something no, no one else has witnessed. Overall, a great take with regards to touching a lot of aspects and giving a lot of thought-provoking questions to actually ponder over after your table topics as such. So great job on that. Moving forward, the sixth speaker being Toastmaster Archita. What is your favorite way to practice self-care and nurture well-being? Toastmaster Archita, you come across again as a DIY girl. Uh, you had a, again a contrarian opinion about exercising, how that makes you like exhausted. Uh, you mentioned about journaling, you mentioned about music, but again, you could have just mentioned as to how that basically helps you get that sort of a, what we say, how that nourishes your soul or how that activity helps you just, uh, just basically losing your uh, stress or how that basically helps you in your overall nurturing yourself and nurturing your well-being as such. So some anecdotes would have helped because you just mentioned about those specific pointers. That's it. And I felt you did have some time to mention about some anecdotes, some some activity that you did with respect to those activities that would again go a long way in making the topic relatable. Last, last but not the least, Toastmaster Bala. Uh, favorite way to relax and unwind. Toastmaster Bala, you started with a great uh, dramatization, impersonating, impersonating your wife, uh, wherein you mentioned you are like how your wife would have said you are simply an idiot. So that was a great way of starting the audience, uh, starting the speech as such and making the audience uh, hooked to your entire speech and a great humorous take i would say listen to your better half was the crux of it chit chatting with friends and then you moving on to mentioning that it's something that is something you are mentioning on the lighter note so overall a great take but i would say not to contradict on your specific like you if it's a joke that you are putting out across you need not clarify on that joke otherwise the the joke entirely like fizzles out as such is what i believe so just leave it at that. Just don't explain whether it's something that you're putting it or putting it across as a pun or something that you actually seriously mean it. It's up to the audience to decipher and understand as such. So that's all with regards to my table topics uh, evaluation. The meeting started a little uh, a tad late, but we had a great Sergeant at Arms and a great presiding officer address by the outgoing toast, uh, President Toastmaster Archana. And thereafter, a great uh, insights about how Toastmaster Smita perceives those roles with regards to the executive committee yeah. roles as such. That's majorly all from my end. And I hope I was able to share some insights about your respective roles. And I would like to hand the role back to the, yeah. So I have, okay. Uh, so I would like to hand the back, the stage back to the, uh, Toastmaster of the day, Toastmaster Smitha, for her concluding remarks. Over to you, Toastmaster Smitha. Thank you, Toastmaster. Thank you, our general evaluator, sir. My dear friends, we're now left with just one role. And that role is the role of the president, who's at the helm of the affairs. Our outgoing president, Toastmaster Archana, and our incoming president, Toastmaster Jatin, both excellent Toastmasters. And the role of a president here is to not only oversee a meeting of what people do and how they do, but also 
to ensure that they provide a helpful, supportive and a leadership there where everyone can function to the best of his or her own abilities. I would now like to uh, call upon our installation officer who's present here in the meeting. Our installation officer would not only install the president who is the cheerleader, the coach, the manager of the new of the of our club, but also every single executive committee member. Please help me welcome a lady who um, is completely and totally outstanding when it comes to being a Toastmaster. She's been here waiting for us to quickly call her because she has to hurry up to another meeting and we've been holding her back. So I have sincere apologies for it, Toastmaster. Uh, Gayatri Deshmukh, my dear friends, let me quickly introduce her in just under one minute, though I can go on and on for her introduction. She is a stress and anxiety management coach, an emotional intelligence coach, and meditation practitioner. She has worked uh, with the World Bank and NASDAQ, and she was awarded with an honorary doctorate in meditation practice by the World Peace Institute of United Nations. My dear friends, please help me welcome our eminent DTM Gayatri Deshmukh as the installation officer here to install the new EC. Uh, I would like to request our associate club group director, Asankhya Vishwamohan, to please do the honors of installing the executive committee because I have to rush to the another meeting. I won't be able to do the entire thing in the limited space of time because my other meeting will start in approximately 23 minutes. So I'm extremely sorry about it. I think there was some miscommunication regarding the regarding how long the meeting is going to go on for. My sincere apologies. I wouldn't have done this had I, I mean, I wouldn't have committed if I had known that this was go for beyond 6.15. I'm extremely sorry. Asankhya, would you please take over? I have just sent you the script. Okay, Gayatri, you can, if you want, you can start with, I can uh, take it forward from there. 70% uh, so of the installation officer's job is already done by the Toastmaster of the day. She has already acknowledged the outgoing executive committee. She has already acknowledged the incoming executive committee and she has expressed the gratitude to the outgoing executive committee. So the only thing will be required uh, that needs to be done is the uh, role players, what jobs they have. So the script that I have sent you from Sergeant at Arms onward, we'll have to start because yeah. rest all the things are done. All right, I'll take it forward, sure. Thank you yeah. so much, thank you so much. And I'm extremely sorry. If I had known, I would have managed it accordingly. Not at all. Uh, uh, yes, congratulations to all the executive committee members incoming. And thank you to all the outgoing executive committee members. Thank you. Uh, sincere apologies, Dr. Uh, Distinguished Toastmaster Gayatri, uh, we made you wait here for a very long time. And uh, oh, as okay. apologies, I, I truly apologize uh, for this delay. And uh, thank Comes you so much. experience, for don't worry about it. Thank we you so much. This thing. Thank you for coming in here today. Thank you very much. I have copied thank this you. Yes. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Gayatri. I have the link, but yeah, okay. Thank you so I much. I copy pasted the whole content in WhatsApp chat. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, before Toastmaster Gayatri goes, has she left the meeting? Okay. Can I request everyone, uh, Toastmaster Sankhya, before you, uh, you know, install the new C, can I request everyone present here to just switch on your cameras and let's have a group pick because I'm sure people will be rushing uh, once the installation is over. But uh, I have to tell you that you have to just wait uh, until the installation, because we have uh, we have one more poll to go for the best role player of the day, and then the certificates also, right? Since the installation officer had to leave, we decided to postpone it. But now that she's already uh, left the meeting, Toastmaster Sankhya, what do you propose? Should we complete sure, the meeting? Sure, now? sure, sure. We can complete the meeting first and then proceed with the installation. Okay. Toastmaster Jatin, are you ready with the poll for uh, the best role player? I'll request you to please post it in the chat box. I love the new names that I can see. We had the eagle eye role players for the auxiliary role players and for the major 
role players now, the long stage time, it says best lion heart role player. This is amazing. We have new names. The new EC has got the new names. I'll request everyone to quickly fill in the form. And if you have already voted, then just give me a virtual thumbs up so that we can proceed further. Okay. So as I was speaking, and I quickly hurried, uh, I did speak about the outgoing president. Uh, I'll just take another 15 seconds to just acknowledge her presence here and the kind of work that she's been doing. She has played the sergeant at arms. She has been the VP membership. She has been the VP education. And then finally, last term, she was our president. Uh, managing a hospital, managing, uh, she's an anesthesiologist, an intensive care specialist, and then the president of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. It was an amazing, amazing work that our Toastmaster, dear, um, our Toastmaster Archana did. And you saw her ever smiling and uh, ever forthcoming. So thank you so much, Toastmaster Archana. When you see the recordings, you will sure know that this uh, club acknowledges and thanks you a lot for the kind of work that you did. And now we have a new president here, raring to go. You have seen the changes. You've seen a lot of uh, the different kinds of WhatsApp groups that have been created. There are so many ideas that he has up his sleeves. And we are waiting. We are so much waiting for those Master Jatin to tell us more of what is in store for us. But I can tell you there's a lot, lot wonderful things in store for uh, everyone out here with the new president, Toastmaster Jatin. So thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin, for accepting this role. And we're all looking forward to working under your leadership. And now, my dear friends, I have to welcome, I have to formally welcome the installation officer, our associate club growth director, who has been extremely, um, what can I say? What are the words that I can use to describe him? First of all, I need to switch on the tube light here. Just a second. Just... Well, how do I spread light till the time I'm not in light myself, right? They say, fill your own cup and then you uh, spread love everywhere. So this is what I did. Brought light to myself here. Now, our associate club growth director, now the associate club growth director, has been instrumental in creation of our club. A mentor to us, um, a guide to us, and somebody who's been the go-to man for Toastmasters Club of Ratno at all times. Please help me welcome our installation officer. And isn't it amazing, uh, Toastmaster Sankhya, that you get to install another... Uh, EC out here and uh, in a club that was created by you, that was your baby. So help me. Uh, you're already on spotlight, okay? Yes. So please um, help me welcome him now with a warm round of applause, Toastmaster Sankhya Mohan as the installation officer for the new EC term, January 2024 to June 2024. Thank you so much once again, uh, past president uh, and someone who has been taking the helm for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow, Toastmasters Smitha. And I won't mince my words when I say you, you have been the bet on who has been taking things forward uh, right from our initial days as such. And thank you so much for what all you have done and each and everyone who is there uh, right now, the outgoing as well as the incoming executive committee for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. And I, my role as the installation officer, I'll go basically forward with, first of all, uh, with the outgoing uh, the executive committee. I would urge all of you uh, basically to be spotlighted, first of all, the current executive committee that has served from July to December 2023. If all of you can be spotlighted, starting with the president, VP education, who all are there. Uh, can be spotlighted. 
All right, thank you. Toastmaster Abhinav Toastmaster Devika needs to be highlighted as spotlighted as well. A toastmaster, toastmaster and, and, yeah, toastmasters. and distinguished Toastmaster Aziz Ahmed are not in the meeting. Okay. okay. All right. has been uh, spotlighted. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin, for helping uh, in the basically the spotlighting of all the the outgoing executive committee. To start with, I thank you all uh, for your respective roles. And at this time, you are discharged from all of your duties. Thank you for your excellent service to this club. And this is uh, like what we say. This is the transition that every club goes through every six months. And it's the baton is taken forward by the new incoming executive committee. Uh, the entire Toastmasters Club of Lucknow family uh, is expresses your gratitude and for taking the club forward in the past six months. And I am sure that the current, the outgoing executive committee would be there available to assist the incoming in making the transition a lot more smoother. So thank you all and a huge round of applause for the outgoing executive committee. Uh, people who are there, people who are not there. We have Toastmaster Archana, we who started the meeting today. So thank you, everyone. And I would urge Toastmaster Jatin to unspotlight all the participants now. It's it's uh, the team on Toastmaster Smitha doing the magic. Okay, okay, all right. Toastmaster Smitha, if you can like. Uh, do you want me to unspotlight all of yeah, them? Yeah, remove the spotlight from all. The they're, they're all part of the new EC also. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So I'll start with one uh, each. Basically, I'll start be starting with okay. Every roles, yeah. right? Right. Thank you so much. Well, fellow Toastmasters, dear guest, I am here to install the new officers of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. I'll be stating, uh, Toastmaster Smitha has already stated the responsibilities of the respective roles as such, but I'll just include the same in my, the oath taking ceremony as well. And the collective challenge to is to make this club one of the best clubs in Toastmasters International. This one, this will involve helping the members achieve their goals as well as leading the club to become President's Distinguished Club status this coming year. That is ending July 2024. And will the new officer team one by one come forward uh, and form a line? And we, we will be starting with the sergeant at arms role and moving on till the president as such. So each officer is obligated to attend monthly club executive committee meetings, attend club officer trainings that will be held twice a year. So we will be having the club officer training starting from next week itself, from the 20th of January. I'll urge all of you to attend one of those trainings at least. And then thereafter, prepare a successor for your respective roles towards the end of your term by the end of June 2024. I will now describe the challenges for each and every role, starting with the Sergeant at Arms. So if the Sergeant at Arms, the newly elected Sergeant at Arms can be spotlighted. Okay, Toastmaster Suraj. Toastmaster Suraj, as the Sergeant at Arms, you arrange the meeting location, maintain the club equipment in working order, ensure that adequate club supplies are available, set up room before the meeting begins, make all relevant educational and PR materials displayed, attend to special equipment needs of the clubs. This being an online club, this goes a, this is something wherein we require that additional support. Greet the guests while the meeting is happening before the meeting starts. Help the president make sure that the meeting begins on time. Toast, Toastmaster Suraj, will you perform these duties to the best of your ability? Yes. You can say I yes, will I will. All right. Yes, I will. Thank you so much. You are now installed as a Sergeant Arms for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, next up, I would like to invite the treasurer, the incoming treasurer for the term January to June 2024.
all right toastmaster smitha toastmaster uh, smitha as a treasurer you keep financial records prepare the club budget announce when it's time to for members to pay dues explain the dues structure to member collect dues work with the secretary to ensure that the club remits uh, and submits the dues promptly on time to toastmaster national world headquarters toastmaster smitha kotka will you perform these duties to the best of your ability i will thank you so much toastmaster smitha you are now installed as the treasurer for toastmasters club of lucknow for the term january to june 2024 congratulations thank you, thank you. uh thereafter i would like to invite the uh, incoming secretary for the club if the incoming secretary can be spotlighted thank you so much toastmaster smitha toastmaster devika as the secretary of toastmasters club of lucknow you maintain an accurate membership roster and attending submit the new club officer list to toastmasters international before june 30th of this year work with the treasurer that uh, that new member applications and dues gets to toastmasters international world headquarters as soon as possible before the renewals concludes work with the treasurer to submit your club renewals uh, to toastmasters international on time provide the club with minutes of each meeting after the weekly meetings toastmaster devika will you perform these duties to the best of your ability i will congratulations toastmaster devika you are now installed as the uh, the secretary for the club toastmaster club of lucknow for the term january to june 2024 congratulations thank you, thank you. the next up we have the vice president public relations Uh, of the club, the incoming vice president public relations, that is none other than Toastmaster Shubham. Right, Toastmaster Shubham, as the vice president public relations, you attract visitors to the clubs thoroughly uh, through uh, free publicity. Use a variety of means to promote the club in the community or the organization uh, in the community specifically, and then enlist your fellow club members in PR activities. providing them with promotional materials and ideas for inviting guests regularly recognize member achievements with methods such as announcements newsletters emails and articles that you submit to for the newsletter toastmaster shubham sinha will you perform these duties to the best of your ability i will congratulations toastmaster shubham you are now installed as a vice president public relations for toastmasters club of lucknow congratulations thank you next up we have the vp membership of the club the incoming vp membership for the term january to june 2024 uh toastmaster rachit if toastmaster rachit can be spotlighted yeah thank you so much toastmaster smitha toastmaster archita as a vp membership of toastmasters club of lucknow you lead the club's membership building efforts to achieve the membership goal of eight new members while the vp pr of uh, vp pr motivates people to visit your club you motivate the current members to invite guests promptly give new members applications and use to the secretary and treasurer personally greet guests and provide them with guest packets including a membership application make sure each guest hears about the benefits of toastmasters and gets a personal invitation to become a member by you and you represent the club at club area council meetings of your respective area that is area f1 toastmaster archita will you perform these duties to the best of your ability yes i will congratulations you are now installed as the vice president public relations for toastmasters club of lucknow for the term january to june 2024 congratulations thank you and thereafter we have as toastmaster smitha rightly mentioned the the thread that hold all the beats together uh, the vice president education of the club uh, that is the shed scheduler of the meetings for the club i would like to invite toastmaster abhinav on the stage toastmaster abhinav as the vice president public vice president education you gain commitments from members to set educational goals for themselves 
assure that club members are aware of the schedule of meeting roles. You plan meetings that will assist members in meeting in meeting their goals. Work with the club members to keep meetings fun and well run. Work with your members to ensure that they submit their applications for educational awards promptly. Provide for educational topics at club meetings, such as those of successful club series, better speaker series, for which information is avail available on the, the Toastmasters portal. You re represent your club at area council meetings, area F1 district 124. As the, as the second highest ranking officer, you preside over the meeting when the president is absent. Toastmaster Abhinav Chauhan, will you perform these to the best of your ability? Yes, I will. Congratulations, Toastmaster Abhinav. You are installed as a Vice President in Education for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow for the term January to June 2024. Congratulations. Last but not the least, we have the President, Toastmaster Jatin, if he can be spotlighted. Toastmaster Jatin, or I would say friendly neighborhood Toastmasters Jatin. Uh, thank you uh, so much for being, uh, thank you so much Toastmaster Smitha, Smitha for spotlighting Jatin. And Toastmaster Jatin, as the president of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow, you are the chief executive officer. Thus, you preside at all club meetings and all meetings of the club executive committee. It is your challenge to see this club, uh, that the club adds new members and meets the needs of its current members to serve their communication and leadership goals. You establish a club climate that is supportive, stimulating, and rewarding to its members. You realize that the among the resources that are, are available to you, you have your fellow club members, you have your club officer team, you have your club officer's handbook, your area director, your division director, the entire district leadership that would be there at your disposal. Toastmaster Jatin, you hold the gavel or a pen, if you can hold a pen, as a symbol of power and authority. Or something as a symbol or a token. Thank you. Toastmaster Jatin, you hold the gavel as a symbol of the power and authority that your club has given you during your term of office. I am confident that you will use it wisely and with restraint. Toastmaster Jatin, as a member of Toastmasters Club of Lucknow, as well as its as, basically as well as its leader, will you work with your executive committee and club members to make Toastmasters Club of Lucknow a president's distinguished club this year? <clears throat> thank you yes i will try thank you so much toastmaster jatin you are and you are now installed as the president for toastmasters club of lucknow congratulations so and without this is not the end ladies and gen gentlemen we still have a bit of an oath taking ceremony left i would urge toastmaster smita to uh, spot like to, to remove the spotlight from me and toastmaster jatin now from both of us, if you can remove the smart uh, spotlight from all three of us. Yeah. Toastmasters Club of Lucknow, the members of the club, Toastmasters Club of Lucknow, I would urge you all to unmute yourselves. All right. Your officer team has just pledged to serve this club to the best of its ability, to be the best Toastmasters Club possible and to meet the needs of its members your club will need active participation from each member. Do you as members pledge to work together with your officer team to make Toastmasters Club of Lucknow the finest Toastmasters Club it can possibly be? Yes. Yes. Yes, yes I will. Yes. I am glad to hear that. By the authority vested in me as your associate club growth director, it is my sincere pleasure to declare these Toastmaster officers installed in their respective roles. Please join me in welcoming the upcoming uh, Toast, the executive committee for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow for this up, upcoming year. Congratulations. Just congratulations, everyone. And thank you for so much for this opportunity, Toastmaster Smita and Toastmaster Jatin. And that's all from my end. I would be handing the stage back to the the incoming presiding the president, the presiding officer going forward, Toastmaster Jitin, to share his few words before he, we actually conclude the meeting. Over to you, Toastmaster Jitin. Thank you. 
Thank you, Mr. Installation Officer. Hi. Uh, so, am I audible? All right. Cool. Thank you so much. Well, this is the first. This is the third time, and uh, um, technically the only time where I haven't was really not willing to take up this uh, role of uh, presiding or uh, leading a club as a president. Um, just because having done that part, uh, where the first the first time where I had to actually ask for it, and then I could do justice to the role. The second time where I had to put, uh, had to because there was nobody else left to do that. Uh, we were just four members left in the club, and this one wherein I was asked to so or rather I was pushed to do it because people just were find me lovable. Which, and they do not want to, to continue for, continue to be loved anymore. But uh, having been put or having been uh, giving this responsibility, uh, I would like to borrow one more, uh, or rather, yeah, borrow one more thing from Spider-Man Universe that I've already been doing. Other than saying that I'm uh, that we are all not not just I, uh, we are all the friendly labor of Toastmasters, and now that we are also part of uh, the executive committee of the club, it's not the uh, it. We have a certain power, like Toastmasters and just mentioned, and as as it says, with great power comes great responsibility. It's not that you have been given power to lead or change the fate of the club or uh, its members. It's a power that you have in your that you believe that you have that has allowed you to volunteer to serve the club. Because to in Toastmasters, more than anywhere else, I feel it's it's more of serve the 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 feeling the um the behavior of serving the club serving your members is what takes it forward because we uh, in this Toastmasters in uh, world are here to help each other help uh, and improve our whole our skills through peer driven feedback and peer driven learning and that's what we only possible when we love each other as much as we love ourselves so i i hope that uh, everybody with this particular thing in mind certainly goes forward to do the best they could in whatever uh, roles they have taken to serve and then showcase your best skills and help us move for help us go further so that then these skills can be utilized in your personal and professional life now that being said enough gyan time for some awards because this is the this is the first meeting uh, of this particular year and it definitely as a uh, our immediate past president archana said that with this since the says the omen is good it's good to have those awards as well let me start uh, if our magician Toastmaster of the day, Smita, can give me share screen rights. You are the co-host, uh, Toastmaster Jatin. You have. Can everybody share. see my screen? Yes. Cool. So first, uh, the first award that we have is for the best prepared speaker. Do we have any guesses? Obviously, that's. The general tradition of asking for it but if not here it is the best speaker of the day is toastmaster Noshin. all right who the next uh award that we have is for best evaluator do people want to take guesses there if not i'll just quickly move on it's jatin kalani uh the best table topic speaker of the day now since the, uh, that being table topic speaker there have to be some impromptu guesses for sure. Those Anybody master has any favorites if they remember? Just Master Manvi. Okay. Yes, those are. All right. Looks like the public is in alignment with you. So Toastmaster Manvi is our best table topic speaker. Do we have Toastmaster Manvi? Unfortunately, with shared screen, I have lost. Yes, yeah, she's there. She's there. Okay. Can can we can I request? Uh, okay, I forgot to do that. I think Tosman Noshin is also there, right? Oh uh, yeah, Tosman Noshin. Yeah, okay, so could we highlight her and then take a picture with her, Tosman uh, Sushmita? I've asked them to start the video, Tosman uh, Noshin. But since you're sharing the screen. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll request Toastmaster Noshin to just uh, raise her virtual hand, then her window will be the first one on the screen for me to take a picture. Uh, yes. 
let me see if I can add you to the spotlight. I have added you to the spotlight, but um, but yes, she will not be visible since the screen is being shared. Hmm. Okay. But, but yes, she's. Uh, I have taken a screenshot. I have taken a screenshot. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that as well. Okay. So then, can we request Toastmaster Manvi to? if it's possible for her to re, um, turn on her video now and raise hand, the virtual hand. Thank you so much, Toastmaster Jatin, for the certificate, but I'll not be able to switch on my camera right now. I'm really sorry. No problem. Just raise your virtual hand. And I'll ask, uh, uh, can I request Toastmaster Nasheen to lower her hand? Yes. Thank you. I'm taking a picture now. The next we have is best eagle eye role player of the day, which is for the short stage time amongst the tag team, timer, account, and grammarian. Three options. Then there's no none of the above, so you have to choose one. All right. So we have a tie actually. Our first winner is the timer Bala, and we also have our counter Archita. So congratulations to both of them. I saw that Bala said that he might be leaving, but if he's around, can we have a quick? Yes, he is there. Yeah. He's a fan from him and Archita, please. I just. Yeah, please raise your virtual hand as well. Thank you so much. Thank you for uh, volunteering to take the role at the last moment. Are agreeing to take the role at the last moment. Thank you. Thank you very much. And doing a thanks for this job. award. And but I'm sorry, I just have to leave. I'm, my apologies for that. Sorry. Archita, you around? Yeah, Archita is already sleepy. So let's do this quickly. Congratulations for being the first. Eagle Eye role player of the new year, the best Eagle Eye role player of the new year. Thank Sandra. you. Thank you. Okay. So next we have the Lionheart role player of the day amongst the T mod, DTM, and general evaluator. For some reason, people have not been able to make up their mind again, or it's just that the meeting has been so wonderful. That there is a tie as, as well. So we have the first winners at the Table Topics Master Anushka Pandey and General Evaluator Asanke Mohan. Congratulations to both of you as being the first or the best line heart role player for Toastmasters Club of Lucknow. So, Mr. General Evaluator, can we have a virtual raise of hand from you? And just a second, please. Just a second. Clicking sure. picture again. Done. Now, uh, can we? Uh, can you also uh, show the other certificate? Oh. Of table topic master. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? Yes, the picture has been taken. Thank you. All right. So with this, uh, I just just was one or rather two things that I would like to mention. One, obviously, thank you to our general evaluator and ACGD, uh, Asanke Mohan, for not only volunteering to or agreeing to take up the role, both the roles at the last moment as the general evaluator and of the installation officer and doing the honors for us, uh, honor for her for sure. For um, like our team had said that from someone who has been the founding member of the club to for him to be here and then. Do the honors for us. Uh, 
anybody else then before i move on to the last point of agenda or rather the first point of agenda for our uh, ec uh, team anybody else has any comments or anybody has not else anybody has any comments madam timod well it's been a wonderful meet i'm so glad that i've been part of this club for such a long time and uh, gearing up to and fulfill another role with another team and it's wonderful looking forward to it thank you so much thank you we hope that the new ec will definitely work build on the foundations that have uh, been constructed by, by people like asank and you so that this club can definitely rock on for sure i see somebody uh, richa is here uh, i don't know sure if she's a toastmaster or a guest richa would you be able to speak and turn on your video if possible all right manmi and uh, noshin do you have any comments on how did you find the meeting with tmcl with the sister club no it was a good meeting indeed uh, i was actually excited when postmaster was told me that i have to go to tmcl again back it was uh, an experience to be nourished and cherished for me in the coming future looking forward to coming in more such meetings and yes i also like got to be a part of the meeting where in my other like friends or what you call the people outside ntmc were there including shubham manishka postmaster asanti so it was a experience that i cherished definitely thank you and thank you we thank archita for bringing you to our meeting so hope to see you more here um with this i think the point of agenda that i wanted to mention i think we already have been working on it so everybody knows that at tmcl since we are just at being the friendly neighborhood toastmasters we are we are just we are online we are just a quick whatsapp and zoom call away so it's no longer we are no longer tied to a particular location uh, even though as much as i love um, or have connections heartfelt connections to lucknow uh, we have been told that since lucknow is not our base we are now the worldwide uh, we are worldwide so why, why not signify that by a name change and that name change has been voted on upon by everybody in the club as of now i believe and i believe we do have a winner should we do we want to announce that and going forward to change the club charter with the new club name shubham doesn't seem too happy no <laughs> he's the one who has to publicize it if pr is not happy how are we going to <laughs> publicize the club anymore <laughs> okay so should we yeah you're saying something shubham no no go carry on are we okay with the name change no yeah sure if all are okay then <laughs> who am i <laughs> but i love the name to so smart okay. club of lucknow because i also love lucknow <laughs> but yeah change the name yeah it's it's as if but i think it's it's a boon and a bane in both sense because in some sense people feel lucknow and then they come to us and say okay it's a, it's a lucknow club so it's the center of our state and then people come to us and then other ways like okay is ltmc and tmcl one and the same thing so you don't know what to do with it all right we hold on to it we give another thought but uh thank you everyone and for this wonderful meeting i'll just hand I'll hand over the meeting to our new saa toastmaster suraj to formally close the meeting so thank you dear president tm toastmaster jatin the new ec will stand tall beside you to make this club a happening place to be with this i adjourn the meeting thank you all